this season two, episode number 15 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host, Travis McNeil, and today we continue our countdown of the top 50 matches in Impact Wrestling history with match number 36 on our list. Uh, now, before I go any further with this video, I'd like to give a disclaimer uh, that this video does contain a discussion regarding Teddy Hart. Um, you know, Teddy Hart is someone that's had, uh, you know, quite the tumultuous past and, uh, you know, many different allegations uh, against him. So if you choose to refrain from watching today's video, I understand. If you've watched any of my videos before where I discuss controversial figures, um, I do know that uh, I will refrain from uh, tagging Teddy Hart in any social media posts regarding this match. Uh, so today's contest is the Super X Cup Tournament semi-final match between Juventud Guerrera and Teddy Hart. It was from the September 3rd 2003 edition of NWA TNA. Um, this event kind of, you know, lives in, in you know, infamy a little bit, I guess. Uh, but it's also, you know, put on quite the pedestal. It's held uh, in, in quite high, high regard. Um, so uh, TNA did this Super X Cup tournament. Uh, they taped it. So spoilers were out at the time before this match happened. And the big buzz coming out of this was the performance of Teddy Hart. So unless you were lucky to get your hands on some mat rats or some stampede tapes through various tape traders back in the early 2000s, uh, this was kind of most people's first exposure to Teddy Hart and he blew us away. But of course, in typical Teddy Hart fashion, it was not without its controversy. Uh, you know, there was a, a story coming out of this that, you know, he no sold, you know, the finish of, of his match with Hoovy immediately after it happened. Um, you know, shortly thereafter, he would get, you know, a, a shot in Ring of Honor. Um, you know, while he got that shot in Ring of Honor, he would do, you know, similar things in the scramble cage. Um, you know, he got into a fight with, with CM Punk, you know, at a bar or whatever it was, post a TNA taping. It might have been this show. It might have been a different one. I, I honestly don't recall. It's, you know, been, been almost 18 years now. Um, but that said, this, this match, uh, it starts out with a really hot crowd. And the reason being is this is a semifinal match in this tournament. So Teddy Hart came in. He had a match with Johnny Storm. It only went three minutes in the first round, but it was awesome. It is well worth watching. It's an incredible short little sprint of a spot fest. Juventud Guerrera is Juventud Guerrera. You know, this is post WCW, um, you know, post ECW. So a guy that had a tremendous following through there. And, and you know, he didn't, he didn't make the shift from WCW to WWF. Um, you know, Ray Jr. had, you know, come into WWE in the, the summer of 2002. So people were kind of wondering, well, where's Hoovy? Um, you know, when he had this, you know, run in TNA through these various X Cups that they did. He was also working XPW at the time, um, you know, doing matches with, with Jerry Lynn and Johnny Storm and those guys. So um, this match, you know, it was, was two figures that I think people were really excited for. The, the crowd is just super hot to be in with. Uh, because they've seen Teddy, they know what he can do. Uh, you know, you obviously know what Hoovy's going to do. So this is a, you know, became an instant dream match. Even if you hadn't seen Teddy Hart, you know, prior to this show, it's now an instant dream match. Um, and I find wrestling's funny because wrestling tends to go through these cycles where, you know, in the 90s, like ECW was, was a revelation, right? Um, and then in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, you know, that ECW Attitude Era stuff, you know, really was starting to not hold up, I find. And instead, we got the shift, you know, in the, the early 2000s, especially to, you know, the, the crazy spot fests, right? Um, and then, you know, by the 2010s, those, you know, people kind of started to become more critical of those. And then we started to shift to more, you know, toward that New Japan kind of elongated, you know, more kind of hard hitting psychological kind of style, whatever you want to call it, the King, you know, what you call it strong style, you know, from new Japan, you call it King's road from all Japan, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, we kind of had that shift toward that a little bit, I find. So what, you know, was cool that kind of became old. I find for me personally is starting to become cool again. I love watching ECW now. It just seems so different than what we get. But, you know, in the, in the 2000s, I was like, man, ECW kind of sucks. Like, it's it's not holding up. Um, and it's the same thing with spot fest matches like these. They're just so crazy. They're full of moves. And they're just fun. And sometimes that's all you want from wrestling is fun. You want a match like this 
that goes 10 minutes that's full of just crazy, ridiculous stuff that, you know, you when it's all said and done, you go, man, that was cool. And you really don't have to think about it more. You don't have to analyze it. You know, with the world being what it is right now, and with so much stress on everybody, this kind of wrestling is very easy to unpack and to digest. And I think that's why I find myself enjoying it, you know, just as much now as I did back then, even though I had that lull and that lapse from it, you know, in the middle. Uh, so this match is just, it's crazy moves. Um, they use spots from both guys' first round matches uh, that they incorporate in here. Teddy Hart does basically like a rewind Hurricane Rana off the ring apron, which that was a Johnny Storm original. He beat Johnny Storm in the first round. I dug it. He hit a moonsault off the barricade. He went for his Asai moonsault, which he blew people away with in the first round because he does it off the top rope instead of the middle. Um, but, you know, Hoovy cuts him off, hits a crazy turnaround, you know, Asai cross body. And then follows it up by hitting a springboard turnaround, you know, Hurricane Rana off the top rope to Teddy. Um, Teddy then outdoes him and hits just a wild spiral tap and then hits his big Asai moonsault. Um, Hoovy goes for the Hoovy driver. Teddy manages to fight out of that and ends up on the top rope. And in the first round, he hit this glorious, like, floating DDT where he'd dive off the top rope and, and catch himself and, and hit this DDT. He hit it on Johnny Storm. So he hits it on Hoovy, but with that added, you know, 180-degree turnaround twist in it, it was glorious. Um, he hit, Teddy Hart hits a shooting star press in this match that is just madness, the elevation he gets. It's actually what I chose for the thumbnail for this video, and you can just see in that thumbnail the insane height that he gets. But in what would end up kind of becoming a Teddy Hart staple, uh, you know, he hits the shooting star, but he blows out his own knee, you know, doing a high risk move. And that's what leads to his loss. And that's something, you know, if you've watched a lot of Teddy on the independence, you see that's kind of a common thing for him. And, you know, I, I can criticize it a little bit. You know, Teddy Hart seems to have, you know, quite the ego amongst, you know, other problems with him. Uh, so, you know, for somebody to be able to beat him, oh, it's because, you know, Teddy Hart, you know, he loves the fans and he tried one too many high risks, right? But he hits the shooting star. It's beautiful. He hurts his own knee. That allows Hoovy to hit the Hoovy driver. He goes up top for the 450. Teddy cuts him off. And then just, you know, in a callback to Hoovy versus Blitzkrieg from Spring Stampede 99, the finish is just an unbelievable Hoovy driver from, you know, from the top, an avalanche Hoovy driver to put Teddy away, which, you know, it's well documented. You know, Teddy Hart and Jack Evans were very much influenced by Blitzkrieg. So I loved that callback there. I was a huge Blitzkrieg fan, you know, in his limited run in WCW, you know, in the late 90s. Um, you know, they cut it, you know, before the post-match of Teddy, you know, kipping up and, you know, Trying to trying to get you know his love from the fans for an extended period of time, but it's fine uh, as it's presented on TV. This is an absolute wild match with a hot crowd. It is fantastic. It's everything you want out of a ten minute spot fest. Um, and this was just a really great top to bottom show from TNA. They did the tournament and then they capped it off with the Wednesday Bloody Wednesday War Games match, which was fun enough. Um, and I, I have very fond memories of watching this weekly pay-per-view when it happened. I read the spoilers beforehand, um, you know, which is something I, I try to not do so much nowadays. But at the time, it was all about spoilers. So I read them at the time. I was really excited. I'd seen a little bit of Teddy Hart and Matt Ratz before. Um, so I was really excited to see how he played off. This match blew me away. It's tremendous. And it's just as good in the year 2021. Um, you can watch this match, of course, on Impact Plus. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.